guys, this is um, Math 6, Lesson 6-3 video. Um, represent percents greater than 100 or less than 1. In this lesson, we'll be able to write percents that are greater than 100 or less than 1. Let's start with solve and discuss it. Um, Marcy, Bobby, and Max began their homework at the same time. Marcy finished her homework in 16 minutes. Bobby finished his homework in 50% of the time it took Marcy to finish. Max finished his homework in 150% of Marcy's time. How long did each of them work? So we only know the exact minutes for Marcy and other people are in terms of percentages um, compared to Marcy and um, yeah, so how can you figure out the exact time, the minutes that it took for both of them, Bobby and Max, to finish their homework? How can you use a model to represent a part that is greater than a whole? So we see 150%. We know how to find 50% from last lesson. What about 150%? How could we figure it out? We could use a number line for an example to figure out um, the 100% and how much we need for other people, okay? So let's start with Marcy because Marcy will be our 100%. Uh, Marcy, if this is zero and that's 100%, and that's 50%, she finishes in 16 minutes. That's Marcy. Okay. What about 50%? What's 50%? What's half of 60 minutes? 30 minutes would be how much? Bobby spent doing his homework. What about the last one, Max? Max spent 150%. So if 100% is 60 minutes and 50% is uh, 30 minutes, what would be 150% where you add 100% plus 50% to get 150%? That's like 60 minutes plus 30 minutes to get 90 minutes, right? So 150% would be 90 minutes where Max has spent solving the homework. Okay, good. Let's look at focus on math practices. Did Max spend more time or less time on his homework than Marcy? Explain. So did Max, 90 minutes, spend more time or less time on his homework than Marcy, 60 minutes? More time, right? How could you explain and prove that he has more time. Well, obviously 90 minutes is greater than 60, but in percentage wise, you can say that 150% is greater than 100% or one whole. So max spent more time. Okay, let's look at the next page. How can you write a percent greater than 100 or less than one as a fraction and as a decimal is what our lesson is gonna be about. Let's look at example one. Write a percent greater than 100 as a fraction and as a decimal. So just like the 150% we just looked at, we're gonna look at percents that are greater than 100 and that could still be the part compared to the whole, okay? Um, part doesn't have to be smaller than the whole. 
in our case. Okay, so example one, Jan and Kim built model cars for a science project. Kim's car traveled 140% as far as Jan's car. How can you write 140% as a fraction and as a, and as a decimal? So we're going to start from writing 140% as a fraction and a decimal. So one way you can write it as a fraction first, right? 140 over 100 would represent the percentage because percent means out of 100. And so you can divide both terms by 20 to simplify your fraction to seven over five. That is your equivalent fraction. And your simplified fraction is seven over five, okay? Or you can write decimals using the fraction that you have, seven divided by five, or you can literally divide 140 divided by 100, or simply 14 divided by 10. And that could be 1.4. Okay, you can literally divide it or use the fraction to write the percentage as a decimal. Okay, so again, keep in mind that one as a decimal is equivalent to 100% in percentage. Okay, so 0 0.5 would be 50%, but 1.5 is 150%, okay? So try it. The area of a new movie theater is 225% of the area of the old theater. What is 225 as a fraction and a decimal? See if you can solve it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay. How do you write 225% as a fraction? You're going to write 225 as a numerator and 100 as a denominator and simplify that. You can divide both sides um, by 5 and get 445 over 20. Then you can divide both terms by 3 and get 15, no, not 3. You can divide it by five again and get nine out of four. So nine out of four is the simplified fraction, okay? So you can say 225 over 100 or nine over four. What about decimal? You can divide nine divided by four or you can literally divide 225 divided by 100. But if you simplify fraction, this is why it's um, helpful. You can easily compare and also you can um, easily divide with the smaller numbers instead of dividing the bigger numbers. Okay. So nine divided by four would be, wait, not zero. I'm sorry. How many fours can go into nine? Two, right? So two point something. Two times four is eight, remainder one, put zero down. Um, how many fours go into 10? Two again. How many fours go into 20? Five. So you'll see in decimal, it's gonna be 2.25. And also, if you look at the percentage, you can simply move your decimal places, two places to the left, to get 2.25 as a decimal. Okay, convince me. How would you write 1.75 as a percent? Give an example in which you would use percent that is greater than 100. First, how do you write 1.75 as a percent? 1.75 in fraction is 175 over 100. And so percentage wise, it's 175%, right? Give an example in which you would represent where you would use percent that's greater than 100. What is an example? Do you ever get bonus credits for an assignment or a project or a test? 
If you get a bonus credit and you're allowed to get more than 100%, then you have 105% on a test or on a project. Including bonus points. What else can you can you say? You can say Kaere ran 175% as fast as Jessica in the race. Yeah. So does that mean Kaere is faster than Jessica or slower than Jessica? Jessica must be 100%. So if Kaere is more than 100%, then she runs faster. Okay. All right, that was example one. Let's look at example two. Write a fraction percent less than one as a fraction and as a decimal. Write one half percent as a fraction and as a decimal. What if you have a fraction in the percent? How can you convert that into a decimal and a fraction? Is one half percent the same as one half? No. No, it's not. So percent less than one is less than one hundredth of the whole, right? All of these cubes represent one in a hundred cube, right? So if it's one half percent, one cube is one percent. So one half percent is going to be this much percent. One one half percent. It's very, very small. So how do you write that as a fraction? Well, you do the same thing. You just have a more complicated, a complex fraction where you have a fraction inside a fraction. So put one half on the numerator and put 100 in the denominator. That just means you divide one half by 100. And you can make that as times 1 over 100. And that's going to be 1 over 200. So in fraction, 1 over 2% is 1 over 200. What about 1 over 2% as a decimal? So in decimal, 1 over 2 is 0 0.5, right? So then you can still write it as a 0.5%, but your percent symbol is still there. So this is still a percent. So you can write it as a fraction like that and divide one by 200 or 0 0.5 by 100, five divided by 1,000, you can get 0 0.005. So one half percent is not 0 0.5, it is 0 0.005, okay? You need to be careful. Watch out for these small percentages. Example three, what about writing a decimal percent less than one as a fraction and as a decimal? We're going to write a percent of the solution that is water as a fraction and as a decimal. So if we have a decimal in a percentage that's less than one, how can we convert that into a fraction and then a decimal? So it's a decimal with the percent, right? So it's still a percent. You have the percent sign. You can write this as a fraction by dividing 0 0.9 by 100. And that's like multiply 10 on both sides, you get 9 over 1,000. And this is 0 0.009. So you got a fraction and a decimal, OK, without the percentage sign. This could also be 9 out of 10%. Okay, 9 out of 10% is same as 0.9%, and that's same as 9 over 1,000, and that's the same as 0 0.009, okay? The only difference is when you have a percentage, you can convert the decimals into fractions, fractions into decimals, but when you get rid of the percentage sign, make sure you're dividing it by 100. Okay, so try this question. Write each percent as a fraction and as a decimal in parts A and B. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. 
So what's the first step you follow to rewrite the percents in parts A and B as fractions and decimals? You can divide the percent by 100. So first divide them by 100. Two over five divided by 100 will give you a fraction. So two over five divided by 100 could also be a multiplication of one over 100. And so that's two over 500. Can you simplify that? Yeah, divide both terms by two and you get one divided by 250. Okay, so it could be two over 500 or one over 200. So these could be the fraction. What is this as a decimal? So this is part A. As a decimal, two, um, two over 500, you multiply them by two so that you get a thousand. Okay, um, so you get four over a thousand. And you can write that as a decimal easily because that means your, your digit four is on the third decimal place. So 0 0.004. Or you can literally divide one out of 250. So I'm gonna change that so that it's easier to see, okay? So you can literally divide two divided by 500 or one divided by 250 and get 0 0.004. Okay, you need to be able to divide by yourself. Okay, what about part B? Part B, do the same thing. 0.3% is 0 0.3 divided by 100. And so times that by 10 on both terms and you get three over a thousand. And in decimal, that is 0 0.003, okay? So that's the fraction, this is the decimal. All right, so to summarize our lesson, you can express percents greater than 100 or less than one in equivalent forms. Make sure when you have the percentage and you get rid of it to, fraction, to make fractions and decimals, you divide by 100. Okay, percent to percent, you have to write equivalent fractions and decimals. Okay, don't divide it by 100, percent to percent. All right, that was lesson six, slash three, representing percents greater than 100 or less than one. We'll continue with the next lesson, six, slash four, which is about estimating to find percent in the next video. If you have any questions, ask Ms. King in class. See you in the next video otherwise all right bye guys thanks for watching